ladies and gentlemen, scientists have discovered a rogue brown dwarf that is in our solar neighborhood. And I have discovered some very strange photographs that come out of Russia of here said brown dwarf. Have you noticed we are getting a large number of brown dwarf, hot Jupiter, planet X, planet nine stories. Don't let it alarm you because all alarms do is scare people and hurt your ears. Now, this information might be a little scary to you, so I'll tell a joke, and then I will get to the serious, hardcore science. How's that sound? Can you handle it? All right, here we go. Hey ladies, are you single and looking for that special celestial body out there who's a loner? Well, if I got good news for you, astronomers have found a rogue brown dwarf that is young and unattached. Unattached is a weird word for a low mass star or a low mass failed star. That is the downside, ladies, that this dude could not be a star. He's a failed star. So like, if you do hook up with this rogue brown dwarf, when you introduce him to people, you're gonna have to be like, yeah, this is my boyfriend, two mass J1119-1137. He's a failed star, but hey, he's still eight times the size of Jupiter. So that's gotta count for something. But as they say, it's not the size of the motorboat. It's the way the waves of the ocean crash down upon it. All right, this is hard science, man. Okay, what if there's like a dating site for brown dwarfs? I don't know if you know this, Thor news is for winners. And that's why you're here to so stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Is it just me, or does it seem like the Planet Nine, Planet X, Rogue Brown Dwarf information just keeps on coming faster than I can keep up with it? All right, we're over at CarnegieScience.edu talking about a young, unattached Jupiter analog found in our solar neighborhood. That's interesting and official. Wednesday, April 6, 2016, Washington, D.C. A team of astronomers from Carnegie and Western University in Ontario, Canada, has discovered one of the youngest and brightest free-floating planet-like objects within relatively close proximity to the sun. Wait, what? That sounds scary. The paper reporting these results will be published by the Astrophysical Journal Letters at an age of only 10 million years. I'm sorry, that was funny to me. Which means it's practically a baby on a galactic time scale. The object identified as 2 mass J1119-1137 is between four and eight times the mass of Jupiter. And hence, whoa, that sounds like Herculubus, bro. Herculubus was like eight times the mass of Jupiter and really red or really orange. And hence, falls in the mass range between a large planet and a small brown dwarf. Sweet. Does it have auroras? Can I see photographs? Using data from NASA's Wide Infrared Survey Explorer, WISE, and the other ground-based telescopes, 2 mass J1119 and 1137 was identified by its unique light signature using a combination of optical and infrared images from large area surveys of the sky. We identified 2 mass J1119-1137 by its highly unusual light signature, explains lead author Kendra Kellogg, a graduate student at Western's Department of Physics and Astronomy. Oh great, they got grad students on the rogue dwarf Herculubus hunting teams. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, I guess it's, it's, it's not like outsourcing. It's not like they outsourced. All right, public, go find some brown dwarfs like they did with asteroids. Lord, can I have some good news, please? It emits much more light in the infrared part of the spectrum than it would be expected to if it had already aged and cooled. According to Carnegie's Jacqueline Faraday, the challenge with identifying such rare objects is distinguishing them from a multitude of potential interlopers. Oh, we don't want any Herculubuses interloping, for sure, man. Much more commonly distant old and red stars residing in the far corners of our galaxy can display the same characteristics as nearby planet-like objects. Really? 
This is the very first time I ever heard of that, bro. I'm sorry. I mean, ma'am. How about Bram? Does that work? Works for me. When the light from the distant stars passes through the large expanses of dust in our galaxy on its way to our telescopes, the light gets reddened, so these stars can pose as potentially exciting nearby young planet-like objects in our data, when they actually are not that at all. With the knowledge of these common misidentifications, the team immediately checked their findings using the Flamingos 2 spectrograph instrument on the Gemini South Telescope in Chile. We promptly confirmed that 2 mass J1119-1137 is in fact a young low mass object in the solar neighborhood. What does that even mean? Solar neighborhood. What are you saying? Like, how far out does the solar neighborhood extend? How far does the Empire of the Sun go? Do we know? Can you tell me? Are gonna, some fear mongers are going to take that and run with it. You realize that, Carnegie? Damn it. And not a distant red star, says Western's Stanimir Metchevich. Next, the team wanted to determine the precise age of this object. What the hell, man? It's like, oh, oh my God, we found a rogue, free-floating, brown dwarf, eight times the size of Jupiter, hurling through our solar neighborhood. I wonder how old it is. You know, it's like, that, that wouldn't be my first question. You know what I'm saying? Scientists are weird. All right, well, what does the team want to do after that? Now I'm in suspense on the edge of my seat. Our Gemini observations only showed that the object was younger than about 200 million years. Oh, Jesus, help me. I need strength. If it was much younger, it could actually be a free-floating planet. What? An analog of our own Jupiter, yet without a host star. Okay, so the accretion disk, giant cloud of gas and dust, just collapsed and made an analog of a Jupiter all alone by itself. That is fascinating. The Zavaroras. The final piece of the puzzle was contributed by Carnegie's Jonathan Gagne, using one of the most efficient instruments for infrared spectroscopy in existence, the fire spectrograph on Carnegie's Bade 6.5 meter telescope in Chile. Fire allowed the measurement of the line of sight velocity of two mass J1119-1137 through the Doppler shift of its emitted light. Combining this measurement, with the sky motion of 2 mass J1191137, the team discovered that it belongs to the youngest group of stars in the solar neighborhood. This group contains about two dozen 10 million year old stars. <sighs> okay. All moving together through space. And it's collectively known as the TW Hydra, Hydra E Association. Stupid Hydra. Now how come we never get diagrams showing all the stars in our star field in the solar neighborhood? how they move naturally. You know, you know, you never see the sun and all the stars in our star field moving in their, how they're supposed to really move, you know? We always get like one photograph. And it's like, hey dude, it's 2016. Can we get over the 1980 stuff and maybe show us how our star field works? And why did this shit have to be in Hydra? Demonstrating that the two mass J1190137 belongs in the TW Hydra Association. And so it's only 10 million years old. And inevitably led to the exciting conclusion, says it, Gagney. Being nearby 95 light years away, J2 mass J119-137 only narrowly misses the crown for being the brightest free-floating planet analog. This is held by another object. Is it in our solar neighborhood, though? That is what makes this very important. PSOJ 318.5-22, discovered three years ago. However, at an age of 23 million years. All right, that's boring. Discovering the free-floating planet analogs like 2 mass J119-1137 PSO J318.5 dash catch 22 offers a great opportunity to study the nature of giant planets outside the solar system, concludes Kellogg, who says free floating planet candidates are much easier to scrutinize than planets orbiting around other stars. Wait, what? Huh? What are you talking about, man? I was just like two mass J1191137 are drifting in space all alone. Unless they have Anunnaki on them, then they're not alone. And our observations are not overwhelmed by the brightness of a host star next door. Okay, so it kind of looks like a red dwarf star, but it's not. It's a Jupiter analog that's red. This is weird. Anyway, I'll keep you guys posted, because that's what I do, and then some people get mad. Well, I don't know. People get mad all the time. I think a lot of people, their number one hobby is to get mad or offended. Well, if that floats your boat, weirdo, go to town. Anyway, this is Thor Thor News, and I'm checking out. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out. God bless everyone. Stay cool.
Ladies and gentlemen, this Planet X story is crazier than I am.